In this session, we're going to take a look at the brand new Smear, Twirl, Attract, and Repel tools in CorelDRAW X6. And we want to be aware of the fundamentals of how these tools work because once we understand how to use them, they will open up for us an entirely new avenue of productivity in CorelDRAW. We'll be able to identify opportunities to enhance our workflow and our creativity working with these new tools. And there's some things you'll want to be aware of in working with them, and we'll take a look at that in this session on the fundamentals of working with the Smear, Twirl, Repel, and Attract tools. Looking at the fundamentals, we want to just go ahead and set up, I've actually set up a simple vector circle here. Next thing I'll do is I'll come over here, and it will be my shape tool here, but I'll just left click, hold down, come down to the Smear tool. You'll notice that the properties bar changes. I have the properties of the Smear tool here. The first thing you'll notice here is we have our nib radius. Next to that we have pressure. Next to that we have pen pressure. Next to that we have our smooth smear, and next to that we have our pointy smear. We'll go ahead and start with pointy smear, and we'll take a look at what that does. First thing I'm going to do is hold down shift and change the size of my nib, and I'll just bring this over to my ellipse here, left click, hold down and drag out, and you can see what a pointy smear does. It comes to a point. Go here and change to a smooth smear, left click, hold down and just drag out with my left mouse button. Holding that down, you can see I get a different smear here. Now this smear that is the smooth smear, you can almost use this to start like illustrating things because it just pull out for a long time, whereas the pointy smear just comes out and kind of comes to an end. Or you can use a smooth smear to get started and if you want to come to a pointy end, then go back to your pointy smear and then pull out the end there and you can see we can go much longer and come to a point. Go ahead and hit Control Z and we'll take that back to a circle. Next to that we have our pen pressure here and you can turn that off or turn that off turn that off or turn it on, enable or disable it, and that'll work in conjunction with your pen. Here we have the pressure and we can change the pressure. And we'll take a look at that. I'll bring this pressure down to one. You notice when I try to make my effect, nothing really happens. If I bring my pressure up to about 50, left click, hold down, and I get a little bit more effect there, but if I bring that out to 100, left click, hold down, I get a much more drastic effect. So you're going to be aware of that pressure when you're dealing with that. Here we can change our nib side. Left click, hold down, push your mouse forward, your nib will get bigger. Pull it back, it'll get smaller. Or you can click through the arrows. You can also, in your workspace, just hold down the shift key and that'll let you arrange your nib by moving your mouse kind of sideways, back and forth, etc. Forward and backwards. The other thing you want to be aware of is that you can hold down control and that will constrain the nib vertically in your workspace. You'll notice that even though my mouse is up here at the top, I can't move the nib. The other thing you might want to be aware of is that you can constrain your nib by holding down control and alt and that will constrain your nib vertically, as you can see there. Now one of the things you want to be aware of is the interactive the way in which this tool interacts with vector objects based on the size of its nib and its pressure. If I have a very large nib and I start pushing, I can start tweaking things here in a big way and then if I come down to a smaller nib, I can start making much smaller or more detailed changes to the graphic. Also, if I start on the outside of a object and start pulling through, I'm going to get a different effect than if I'm actually on the object and start pulling through, as you can see there. Now, when you're working with these tools, what you want to be aware of is you can really use them in conjunction. Let's say this, this was the trunk of a tree, and I was drawing some branches for the tree out of the trunk using these tools, which you could do quite effectively. Go up here and go back to smear. I'm going to go ahead and hold shift, and we'll just create a simple tree branch here and we'll just bring a tree branch right out the side of our circle here for the sake of the tutorial. Got this set at 100, I'm going to left click, start dragging this out and bring this this way here. Now if I wanted to make my branch thicker and make it look a little bit more like a real tree branch, I could come back over here to my shaping tool and go down to the repel. And I could go in here and do some repelling. It's set at 11 now, we'll zoom in and just come right in through the center here and just add some repel to this and start to adjust the thickness of that stroke creating almost like what would be the branch of a tree. 
I could go back to, say, my smear tool, change the size of my nib, hit shift, and then come in, say, right here, and start pulling out again another branch. And if I wanted to change the size of that, make that a little bit thicker, I could go back to my repel tool, zoom in here, and then just come in and hit this as you can see here and start to make that look like it's coming right out of the tree branch. So you can see we can do some very organic shaping and forming of vector objects that we create with the smear tool and the repel tool and the twirl tool and also the attract tool. Let's say I wanted to make this part of the branch a little bit thinner so it was balanced with this. Well in which case I would go to my attract tool because that's going to, I'll hold down shift here because that's going to make things thinner as you can see there it'll pull things in but you can see that I could do many different things with these tools and we'll get into some different things in some different sessions relating to these tools but I just want to give you a brief overview of how they function what you need to be aware of and what you can do with the new smear twirl attract and repel tools go ahead and wrap here and we'll continue in our next session